Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with the story of an unlucky thief who couldn't get away. I wonder how the defense attorney would handle that in court. He was in great distress at being surrounded by that many cops, and that's why he ran and crashed into a cop car. Cops are responsible for his reaction, Your Honor. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Man with 15 felony warrants fights cops, gets tased. I got insomnia, but this is when I was working seasonal in tech at a big box store. Near the end of my shift, I see the local PD wheel in three big screen TVs. Damn, that's a lot. Next day, head of asset protection comes up to us, all smiles. They finally caught the serial thief at the store. She went up to him all passive aggressive. Can I help you? but she only gets like two syllables in when she sees this father mucker has a GD crowbar and is trying to break into the apple case in front of God and everybody. There was three of us in tech that day and only three aisles done. None of us see this somehow. Asset protection lead GTFO and calls the cops. The guy realizes he's been had and leaves. However, this guy has 15 felony warrants out on his butt and the local PD were sick of him. So they roll in six cars deep because they were not messing around anymore. Guy peels out of the parking lot, clips a cop car, slams into another parked car, crashes car. He runs back to the store as if that would help him. Doesn't get far as now he has like half the local PD surrounding him because he's a violent felon and is 6'5 or so. So what does this genius do? Takes a swing at the cop. They tase the crap out of him and he's not getting out of jail anytime soon. Probably got some of the details wrong, secondhand and over six months ago, but no matter what, I saw a cop wheeling in three GD 55-inch TVs, and that alone is just audacious. And our second story. Then I guess it won't stay soft. Okay, so the company I work for sells women's clothing, and there's a section that specifically is made for loungewear, and it's known for being super soft. Here's the issue, which is not new for clothes in general. It doesn't stay as soft as when you first buy it. From my experience working there for over a year now, it retains the softness longer as you don't put it in the dryer. And that's exactly what I tell people when they ask, does it stay soft? This is understood for the most part. There's two reactions. Oh, okay, cool. I can do that. And ah, well, that sucks then. I'm saying all this because this one annoyed me more than it should have. A woman comes in, sees the section of soft loungewear, immediately loves it, and goes, oh, but does it stay this soft forever? I say, from my experience, it stays fairly soft as long as you air dry it instead of putting it in the dryer. She then says, oh no, I put all my clothes in the dryer. I never air dry. Me. Okay. Silence as she stares at me. Customer. Is there any other way to keep it soft? Me. I mean, maybe the dry cleaners know some customer oh i never take my clothes to the dry cleaners i do my own laundry me getting annoyed all right customer is there a technique to keep it soft me the only one i'm aware of is to let it air dry customer that's not happening me then i guess it won't stay soft maybe i'm just easily annoyed but this conversation just irritated me way more than it should have and our next story didn't know my brother was so entitled to try and screw me over and nearly leave me homeless. In 2016, my brother had an unexpected divorce and filed for bankruptcy, although he left his house out of it. It shouldn't have come as too much of a surprise, though, since the reason she left was because he cheated on her while she was pregnant with their second child, and although she tried a while longer, she understandably couldn't get past it. The girlfriend got pregnant, too. My mom paid for his bankruptcy and gave him at least $1,000 a month to help him make ends meet. This was the equivalent of his house payment. I should add some backstory to show his history of entitlement. My mom received a $100,000 bonus when she retired, and he told her he was starting a business and needed $20,000, so although he had no business plan, etc., she gave it to him, and he bought a truck. That was the extent of the business. He also helped her reno her house with the remaining money, and that consisted of literally gutting it, taking up the flooring so it was only a concrete slab, ripping out her entire kitchen, taking down walls, etc. He even rented a backhoe to dig a koi pond that remained a big hole in her yard. 
He's known to start projects and never finish them. And this was another example. Of course, the money ran out and she had to live like that for several years until she finally just let it go into foreclosure. She's co-signed so many car and personal loans for him, and he often walked away from those two, leaving her to pay off the debt. Anyway, in 2017, my brother asked me and my family to move from out of state to become roommates with him to allow him to get back on his feet. And it would allow me to save more money, too, to reach my financial goal of getting into real estate investing. I was leery about the idea, but he was begging, and I hated my mom was still having to give him so much money since she only had her retirement and social security, and he was taking a huge chunk of it. The house was a reno because, true to form, he'd started various projects that had never been finished, and he'd never done any repairs. For example, his two-year-old daughter had accidentally locked herself in her room, so instead of taking off the doorknob, he kicked the door in and broke the frame so it was still like that. We signed a rental agreement and agreed to include that if he decided to sell the house, he'd allow us to assume his loan, and we'd pay him $14,000 in equity. As an FYI, he'd bought the house in 2013 and didn't have a lot of equity in it. In 2018 and nine months into the lease, he lost his job and decided to move out of town to be with his girlfriend, now wife, who owned her own house. He didn't have the funds to fix up his house and wanted to be rid of it, so he agreed that we could assume his loan. We weren't anticipating it to happen quite so soon, and I asked if we could wait until 2019 to allow us some time to raise my husband's credit score, and I also wanted to be on my job for two years. He agreed, and we paid him the $14,000. We had another contract that outlined our agreement, which included that we were responsible for everything regarding the house, all major and minor repairs, upkeep, etc. We would pay the closing costs, and that we were also going to begin the reno, because it was depressing to continue to live in a house in such need of repair, we completed the entire reno that included all new flooring, entire interior repainted, entire new kitchen, cabinets, backsplash, quartz counters, appliances, etc., new exterior doors, lighting, the works. We viewed this as our first real estate investment, and I had no reason not to trust my own brother. This was a fantastic opportunity for us because the reno and assumption meant we'd have a good bit of equity in the home, and this was basically part of our retirement plan. Side note, my brother is nine years younger than I am, in good health, started his own business after he lost his job, and his business is low overhead and did $272,000 last year, and his wife's a teacher. I'm middle-aged, my husband's a senior, and he had a stroke 10 years ago, after two years of marriage, that left him paralyzed on his left side and is in a wheelchair with DVT blood flow issues, and I'm also raising three grandchildren. This home really is literally our main retirement plan. So anyway, we got started on the assumption paperwork at the end of 2019, and we almost finished with it when COVID struck. My brother was irritated but seemed to understand. Three months later, I found out that they're bringing me back full-time, so I let him know the good news and asked him to please call for the paperwork. Now he says he's tired of dealing with this, so he's going to hire a realtor to sell the house, and get this, he thinks he's going to keep half the profits. In addition to the $14,000 we've given him, the cost to reno the home, and the $1,000 a month we've paid straight to the mortgage company for 36 months, $36,000, we've also done all maintenance to include stuff like trees trimmed, the house pressure washed, a roof leak, septic pumped, etc. He's never paid a dime since he left, and I've never asked. I treated the house as though it were ours because it was supposed to be. We've never paid a single bill late, and he's acting indignant as though... I've screwed him over. I honestly never look for sympathy due to my husband's issues, etc., but this would cause a severe undue hardship, and he's shown no empathy whatsoever. On top of that, we really needed the house in our name because we were going to do a HELOC to enclose the garage because our mom is starting to have additional medical issues, so we're planning for her to come live with us later this year. If he sells this out from under us, we would literally be about homeless because we can't afford to rent in our area, we would not have any funds left to save, and the housing prices have gone beyond what we would probably be approved for. It's not easy to quickly or slowly find a wheelchair-accessible house to buy or rent, and part of our reno helped with that, like creating a walk-in shower. Also, one reason we moved here is because my granddaughters often had to change schools, 
when they were with their mom, and I promised them we'd stay put so they could put down roots and make friends. We found out they were going to be living with us as he was begging us to move here, so it made sense financially and was a great school district. My oldest two granddaughters are in high school and would most likely have to change, which breaks my heart. We would not even have any equity in a new home, and we wouldn't be able to create space for my mom either. And with the equity we would have in our current one, it opened the door to various options to help fund our retirement, pay it off and do a reverse mortgage, use equity for an income property, buy another primary residence with 3.5% down, and use this one as a rental, pay off student loans, etc. We'd also plan to start a side hustle home-based business using the big storage building we have here. This has left me feeling basically gutted. It's broken my heart and soul, and I just can't believe he's acting this entitled. I've never been a vengeful person, but I honestly feel I'd take the house back to what it looked like previously before I let him make a penny off of our hard work and sacrifices. And as an FYI, I have an appointment with a lawyer, but I'm sick it's come to this. No matter what happens now, in a way, I really have lost my brother. But who needs someone that entitled in their life anyway? Edit. Thankfully, he got the paperwork for us to start the process again. He and his latest wife harassed us about it and continually threatened to stop the process and even tried to force my mom to agree to not make him pay her 10k she'd given him over the course of 20 months after his divorce to pay for his child support. And that was actually much less than the full amount. Here's the icing on the cake, though. Four days after closing, he texted me a listing for a $200,000 two-bedroom condo and told me to tell mom to buy it for him in her name because he was going to leave his wife. I assured him I would talk to her, and I did, to tell her that was absolutely not happening. I guess I'll never change. Hey, guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.